Now that we're all ready to start protecting our management plane, we've got all kinds of great tools to make this happen. And the first thing we're going to work with in this section is passwords. And you're already thinking, passwords? I don't want to worry about passwords. I already know those. Uh, I know you're familiar with some of the passwords we're going to talk about here. Maybe not everything, but this isn't just going to be a quick review of the enable secret and the enable password, the VTY password, that kind of thing. Also, if it's been a little while since you got your CCNA, you may be a little rusty on that, and you definitely don't want to be for your security exam when it comes to those passwords. But the real reason I'm bringing them up here is that passwords really are the first line of defense. And while any password you see here today is hardly uncrackable or unhackable, and we'll definitely be talking about that, they're still effective in keeping people where they ought to be and out of where they ought not to be. So let's go ahead and dive into some general password rules, because when you're a security admin or a, a senior network admin, you may actually be the person in charge of coming up with these rules. And while the rules may not always make you popular with your end users, that's not what we're here for. We're here to keep people out of the network, uh, or in, if they're not supposed to be there, and keep them where they are supposed to be. Now, the first general rule makes perfect sense. The shorter the password, the easier it is to crack that password with either a brute force attack or a dictionary attack. And these two terms are kind of used uh, interchangeably by some, but they're not exactly the same thing. And there's really a great explanation here on Wikipedia I wanted to bring up to you. A dictionary attack, you know, it's, it's a technique, of course, for defeating our authentication mechanism, as we call it, uh, by trying words in a dictionary or likely possibilities. Now, a dictionary attack, again, it's kind of targeted and it just uses a lot of words in a list. And it's actually called a dictionary. You may not try every word in Webster's Dictionary, but the list it uses is referred to by that term. Now, a brute force attack, that's where a large proportion key space is searched systematically, uh, and it's going to try a lot of non-word letter combinations. But a dictionary attack is a little more finesse, I guess you would say, uh, in that it's going to use a list of words. So that's really it. And notice here... Uh, in the fourth line of this description, dictionary attacks succeed because many people have a tendency to choose passwords which are short, seven characters or fewer. Now, everybody's got a different definition of what a short password is. I like this one, seven characters or fewer. I've been in networks where people were allowed to use five character passwords, and to me, you're kind of asking for trouble there. Um, another thing, notice at the very end of this one, adding a single random character in the middle can make dictionary at attacks untenable. And that is a fantastic way to make your passwords much more harder to guess. If you put, have someone put you know, a dollar sign in the middle, a percentage sign, whatever, any character, again, your end users might not like you for it, but it is a great way to make your passwords harder to come up with. And that's actually what I mentioned here in the second point on this board strongly consider making people use alphanumeric characters in their passwords because it makes it exponentially more difficult which is a fancy math way of saying it's a lot harder for one of those two attacks either a brute force or a dictionary attack to come up with that password now if you use any kind of online banking program and almost all of us do or any kind of financing program you've probably been forced to create a password like that because a per excuse me a professional bank account that i have uh, recently, when I had to change my password, and it had been maybe six months since they had forced that, uh, boy, all of a sudden I had to put, I had to use alphanumeric characters, I had to have some numbers in there, I had to have a capital letter in there, and I had to have a special character in there. And, you know, as, as security conscious as I am, even I for a moment went, oh, son of a guy, you know, you know, I think that's kind of the end user union, union rule. You have to gripe about it. But again, we're not worried about making them happy. We're worried about keeping our network secure. Now, you don't have to make people change their passwords weekly. You know, you don't want to go overboard with it. But a couple of forced changes a year is probably a good idea because I am always still surprised to this day when a client site that I'm working on or someone mentions they go in and passwords uh, that are on the servers or routers, any other network hardware, they've been the same for years. And at some locations, let's be realistic here, a lot of network admins have passed through the doors. I've been in more than one place like this where the telnet passwords have been left alone for literally, again, years, 
And we'd probably had 25 people working in there because they had someone new in that chair, you know, every couple of months. It only takes one angry person who knows your passwords to cause a lot of damage. And if you've ever been in this uncomfortable situation, you know, someone is let go from your network team and before they're even out the door, you know, someone is changing the password. And the thing is, that's not just for the network's benefit, as far as I'm concerned, it's also for that person's benefit. Because you can do something when you're angry that you really regret a few minutes later. Uh, and network damage uh, hacking is one of them. And of course, if you know the passwords, I'm not even sure it considered, it's considered a hack. But you just got to be really careful with that. Make sure those passwords get changed on a regular basis. Now, actually, I may hop around just a bit here because I want to mention this. And then we'll hop in and we're going to start a lab here in a few minutes. But true story here. I was once brought into a very large utility company as a senior network admin. And, you know, you always try not to have new sheriff in town disease. You know, I'm the new guy and I'm going to change all the rules, etc. But one thing you want to do in that situation is do a password audit. Because the first things I noticed when I started looking at their passwords and everything else, the passwords were beyond simple. Let's try the letter S there. There we go. The passwords were beyond simple. I would say that if you are a power company in the business of generating power, the word power should not be used as a password. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But seriously, they were beyond simple. They were easily guessable. Uh, they had not been changed in years. And again, a lot of admins had passed through those doors in those years. So that's a real security problem. Now, the reason for that third point that I just mentioned about a lot of people being in there, you know, that became crystal clear to me as time went on, but that wasn't the immediate concern. What the immediate concern was is that a lot of people who no longer worked for that company and maybe didn't even work for the company that supplied them, uh, you know, to put them in there, they would have been easily able to hack away at the network. You know, the kindness of strangers is not something we want to depend on in this business. So it would be a really good idea to change those passwords, right? Of course. And all of the admins who had been there for years were eager for change from the new guy, right? And let me just put this up on the board. Wrong. And I, I'm not saying those people were lazy, although I wouldn't argue with you if you said that, but they were complacent. I'm not picking on them. But I am saying they had gone complacent, and when I announced that we were going to change these passwords at a meeting, you know, you would have thought I said, let's just shut the whole network down and take a week off. And I think they actually would have been happier if that's what I had said. Because you're immediately going to hear, you know, it's too much trouble. You know, we've got all these applications that have been here since 1842, and we're going to have to administer those. And we're going to have to change some settings, etc. Uh, just a career hint for you on the side here. When your network admins complain about having to admin the network, you're probably working in the wrong place. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is to, especially for those of you who are relatively new to working in networking, that you know dealing with a human element can be just as difficult and sometimes harder than working with the equipment. And occasionally, you're going to have to deal with people who resist change because you know it's a cliche of you know we fear change. Uh, well, a lot of people do, and that's just tough for them. Because in that situation, I got the passwords changed. It didn't end the world. You know, all the apps still worked after we admin to them. Um, it's just reality. So again, you're going to get some pushback on that kind of thing. You just got to hang in there. That's your job and get those passwords changed regularly. Now let's hop back up and we're going to start a lab here in just a few minutes. And we're going to look at a couple of those Cisco router passwords. And let's quickly review those two options for the enable passwords. We know we've got the enable secret. We know we've got the enable password. They are probably the first two passwords you were introduced to in your CCNA studies. Now, which one takes precedence over the other if we have them both set? Remember that one? It's the enable secret that's going to take precedence over the enable password. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Now, what passwords are encrypted by default on a Cisco router? Let's say you set the enable secret, the enable password, a console line password, and a VTY line password. We'll even throw an auxiliary line password, the aux port. The only one that's encrypted by default is the enable secret. We're going to see that in a moment and how to encrypt the others as well. And we're going to start this lab with enable secret, excuse me, with the enable password, and we'll use CSENT for that. 
Now, if we try to set a password like that for most of your online accounts, if not all of them, and again, you know, bank accounts, you know, which we discussed a few minutes ago, you would be told at least one of the following. And these, again, I know we mentioned some of these earlier, but they're such good guidelines, I want to mention them to you again. Uh, you know, make the password a minimum of X characters. You know, I'm sorry, you've got to have an eight character password. Uh, you have to use alphanumeric characters in the password. You have to use a number somewhere. Maybe even make them use it in the middle of the password. Uh, you've got to use at least one capital letter. You have to use at least one symbol. And no pet's name, no birthday, etc. And before we dive into the lab, I want to mention one more thing on this field. If you're ever the person that comes up with the secret questions for password recovery, this, this, please make those questions harder to answer. Uh, someone who knows me casually should not be able to answer these questions. It drives me insane when I see you know, password recovery questions and they're like, uh, you know, what's your favorite sports team? Uh, what kind of car are you driving right now? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. If someone casual, who casually knows you would know the answer to it, it's not a very good password recovery question. So enough about that. Let's go ahead and hop up to this particular one. And I'm going to go ahead and call up the live equipment here. Give me one second. Let me look through my teacher's edition and get the answers. Just kidding. Let's go ahead and call that up. And I just wanted to show you here that I don't have anything here as far as any secret commands or anything. Actually, I just did a write erase on this one. And these are the defaults. We've got a couple of timestamps up here. We'll definitely be discussing timestamps in this section. No service password encryption. That's a pretty important command. I'm sure you remember that one. If not, you'll see it in action here shortly. And no other password sets. So again, let's go with a conf T here. And if we run the command enable, Password and secret are the ones that we're looking at right now. And if you just look at iOS help, it's not really giving you much help because it's just got to assign the privilege level password and then assign the privilege level secret. So let's go with uh, uh, excuse me, password first. And a couple of options here. You know, you don't have to set the numerics. You probably should know what that means. You know, unencrypted password will follow. Seven means a hidden password will follow. But we're just going to go ahead and set the password itself. And that's it. And notice you're not, you know, there we go. So let's just go ahead and do a quick write here. And then I'm actually going to log out. We'll log back in and see that entire process because a lot of you may not have seen that yet or maybe lately. So let's go ahead and do a show config. And I want to show you where to always look for the passwords. Just take it a little longer. There we go. Your enable passwords are always going to show up here near the top of the config. You may go ahead and disconnect that now. Enable password CSENT and your VTY and console password and your auxiliary line password to use that. They're always going to show up at the bottom. So let's just do a quick exit here and we're kicked out and it's R1. Console 0 is now available. Press return to get started. And that, of course, is the enter key. And now we do enable and we're prompted for a password. That's not there by default. So we're going to enter CSENT because that's the only password we've set so far. And you'll notice that you didn't see anything when I entered the password. You don't even see the cursor move. You're not going to see asterisk. You're not going to see the cursor move. None of that because that is a default behavior of Cisco routers. It's good security behavior, actually, because nobody can just look over your shoulder and see how many times the cursor moved. We're going to talk about looking over the shoulder here a couple of times with these two passwords. So now that we've got an enable password set, let's go ahead and see if the router will let us set enable secret. And we'll go ahead and put, uh, we're going to put CCNA for that one. So what am I going to see then when I run show config here in just a second? What am I going to see? I didn't need to do it right there, but I, it's more habit. What do you think we're going to see? Well, it always takes longer when you're waiting for it. There we go. And let's take a quick look. Now, there's your enable secret password, followed by a five, and then a whole mess of characters here. And sometimes you'll see slashes, you know, it's just going to be different every single time. Now, this is obviously not what we entered for CCNA, and no one's just going to be able to look at that and say, oh, yeah, that's CCNA. That is, uh, it's been hashed by MD5, 
And now we know we have an enable secret of CCNA and an enable password of CSET. So what's going to happen when I log out here? I typed exit earlier, just type in log out this time. What should I enter here? Well, let me try CSENT, which is what I wrote before. Oops, let's try enable first and then CSENT. And it's not even telling me, hey, you got the password wrong, you typed something wrong, it's too short, etc. It's just asking for it again. And I try CSENT again, it doesn't work out, so I get frustrated and I type it really hard, and you know that never works either. It's just telling you bad secrets, and now you got to move on. You've been dropped back at the prompt. So, of course, if I put CCNA here, then we are good. So that enable secret does indeed take precedence over the enable password. We know which one's encrypted by default and which one is not. But is this a particularly strong form of encryption? You know, it looks strong to me, but of course, you know, looks are not always everything when it comes to network security. On the next video, we're going to discuss that and why we're so worried about those over-the-shoulder network attacks. So I'll see you there on the next video.